Good morning, YouTube family. Hope everybody is well and doing good. Uh, today we're going to be reading on the love chapter. That is found at 1 Corinthians, the 13th chapter. So hopefully you guys will go with me there and follow along with me. And we'll learn as we read together. We'll learn, okay? Y'all, let's open up in a moment of prayer. Precious Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for this day. Thank you for waking us all up in our right minds, God. A mind that want to serve you and also serve others. And Lord, we're just asking you to come down and touch each and every one of our bodies, God. And help us, God, to just keep our minds stayed on you. Because you alone can keep our minds in perfect peace, Father. And Father, as we come and break in your, your, word, your bread today, God. Father, help us, God, to get an understanding out of your word. Help, help me, God, to be this vessel of clay in your hands, used for your glory today, God. And that we know that your word will not go out void, but accomplish what you want to accomplish. And we thank you for your word today that's coming forth. And it's going to help not just your people, but help me also and encourage me. And to know that you are loved and that you love all of us. And thank you for this day. Amen. We're going to go to 1 Corinthians, the 13th chapter. We're learning about love today. You know, the love of God, which passes all understanding. Amen. It's nothing like the love of God. God loves us so much. He loves us just the way we are. Isn't it good to know that you are loved? Regardless of what you're going through, what you did in your past, what you look like, what you feel, what people didn't said about you. Just know that you are loved and God loves you today. And we're going to learn about God's love in 1 Corinthians, the 13th chapter. I'm reading out of uh, the King James Version and the English Version here. I know it's backwards on it. Y'all might can't see it, but that's what I'm reading out of. I'm doing the English and the King James. So y'all bear with me because I like doing the living because... The living, I can understand it. It breaks it down so that we both can understand it. But I have a King James right here, too, on the other side. So, let's start. And hopefully y'all got y'all notebooks, notepads next to you, and a pen and a paper so you can jot down something. If you have any questions or anything, please feel free um, to comment. And then I will try my best to answer them. Um, just... You know, be opening your spirit to get what God is saying to you today and what he's saying to me. I am pretty much open, letting God just use me for his glory. And um, so we're going to start reading. Also, if I don't finish this, we'll go to a part two. Okay. And if I don't, remember to subscribe and like and share this video and help a girl out. Okay, here we go. First Corinthians, the 13th chapter this is found in the new testament it says if i had the gift of being able to speak in other languages without learning them and could speak in every language there is in all of heaven and earth but didn't love others i would only be making noise if i had the gift of prophecy and knew all about what is going to happen in the future knew everything about everything but didn't love others what good would it do? Even if I had the gift of faith so that I could speak to a mountain and make it move, I would still be worth nothing at all without love. If I gave everything I have to poor people, and if I were burned alive for preaching the gospel but didn't love others, it would be of no value whatever. In the fourth verse, love is very patient and kind. Never jealous or envious, never boastful or proud, never hearty or selfish or rude. Love does not demand its own way. It is not irritable or touchy. It does not hold grudges and will hardly even notice when others do it wrong. It is never glad about injustice, but rejoices whenever truth wins out. now it says follow hold on just a minute here because i got the living in this one so i'm reading 
reading both of them. I don't want to get misunderstood here because I'm reading both of them. 13, excuse me, and 7. If you love someone, you will be loyal to him no matter what the cost. You will always believe in him, always expect the best of him, and always stand your ground in defending him. All the special gifts and power from God will someday come to an end. But love goes... God will someday come to an end. But love goes on forever. Someday prophecy and speaking in unknown languages and special knowledge, these gifts will disappear. Now we know so little, even with our special gifts, and the preaching of those most gifted, most gifted is still so poor. But when we have been made perfect and complete, when we have made perfect and complete, then the need for those inadequate special gifts will come to an end, and they will disappear. It's like this. When I was a child, I spoke and thought and reasoned as a child does. But when I became a man, my thoughts grew far beyond those of my childhood, and now I have put away the childish things. In the same way, we can see and understand only a little about God now, as if we were appearing at his reflection in a poor mirror. But someday we, were going to, we are going to see him in his completeness face to face. Now all that I know is hazy and blurred. But then I will see everything clearly, just as clearly as God sees into my heart right now. There are three things that remain, faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these is love. Now it went back to say on the verse 1 of 13 that, I'm going to keep these glasses on so I can see here. It says, though you speak with the tongues of men and of angels, and you have not love, you're becoming a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. That means when you don't have the love of God in you, and even though know, you have all these gifts of speaking in unknown languages and tongues, it means nothing without the love of God. Nothing. It's like that sounding brass cymbal. If you ever heard a cymbal, those two things that they're brass and they go, it means nothing. It's like, irritating in your ears and stuff the love of god needs to be shown it's an, love is not just a talk 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 but it's an action word and when you have the love of god in you it flows out to other people and people can feel the love of god and you want somebody to feel the love of god that's in you and it's not always by what we do, but it's important to know that love is an action word, but also how we speak to that person, how what we say to them. It's important because we got to have love for one another. But God says the greatest love is to love him, not just to love him with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. But the second one commandment is to love your neighbor as you love yourself. That's the second one. But the first one is to love God with all your mind, your heart, your soul, and your strength. And it says you have all them gifts and you just make a noise because that's what it's all about. It's like being seen. How the Pharisees and the Sadducees back in the days, they, they, everything they did, they wanted to be seen. Everybody was seen and they was, they were seen and they was being praised. But God wants you to love not just in word, but in deed. And they were just doing all this stuff so that people could see them and, and, and the preach and the, Give them praise, but they wasn't loving from the heart. And it says, if I had the gift of a prophecy and knew all about what is going to happen in the future, knew everything about everything, but didn't love others, what good would it do? If I knew all this stuff and had all this intelligence and everything else, and I didn't love people, you know, what good would that do? If I can tell you everything else, tell you everything about you and it's all in me, but I wasn't sharing it. If I can tell everything about you and I knew it, but I wasn't giving it to you, how is that love? That wasn't the love of God. And it says, love of God just spreads abroad. Love of God shares. It don't just stay there. It stays limited. It's not stagnant, but it spreads like a wildflower. That's what the love of God does. It, it gives. It, it just flourishes. It's, it flows 
It's not just to you, but to others. You can feel the love of God. You can you can see the love of God. It flows through you and through others. And it says in verse 2, Even if I had the gift of, God, of faith so that I could speak to a mountain and make it move, I would still be worth nothing without love. Without the love of God, you ain't nothing. You got to have the love of God in you. All this, this stuff that we do, if we're not doing it to that person because we love them, then we're doing, there's, there's always something behind that. When you do something with somebody out of the kindness of your heart, you're not always expecting something in return because God takes care of your needs. When you love someone, you give. And don't always expect something to come back to you because God knows what you need and He will take care of your needs. But He wants you to love not just in, in words, but in deed. And He says, If I gave everything I have to poor people and I were burned alive for preaching the gospel, but didn't love others, it would be of no value. <coughs> Excuse me. If I'm giving things, giving away everything, and not the love of God in me, what good would that do? I'm just giving to be given, but I don't do it out of love. I'm doing it to be seen. I'm doing it to expect something in return. I'm doing it for people to talk about me and put me on a pedestal. But when I post it, when I give to people and give to others, it's supposed to come from the heart and because I love people. And, and God says, you know, that when you give in secret, he'll bless you openly. And sometimes we don't have to always let our right hand or our left hand know what we are doing to help other people. We can do it in secret and God will reward you openly. You know what they say when you, when the Bible says that when you have somebody against you to go to that person and give them a gift in secret and you could, you can, you have won your brother over. You know, you never know what somebody is going through and then you can be a bit, a help to them by giving them something that they need. It could be something in your a nice dress. It could be a nice gift. It could be just their friendship. It could be picking up the phone, just saying, I love you. God bless you. I'm praying for you. It could be sending a text. It could be whatever they need, going to the store for them, helping them out, and encouraging your brothers or your sisters, because that's what we're supposed to do, be helpers and, and lovers of one another, not just about me, myself, and I, but helping my neighbor, helping my friend, helping my brother out, helping my sister in Christ out. And showing the love of God. And not just sharing love to those that are giving me love back. But showing love to those that don't love me. Showing love to those that are unkind. Showing love to those that are mean and hateful. Showing love to those people that are not of God. Because you never know through your love and your actions and your lifestyle that you can bring them back to Christ and show them what the real love of God is. It's perseverance and hanging in there and loving that person through the storms and through the bad times and the good times too. Just not just giving from your heart and just loving them. And so, and then it's also saying that love is very patient and kind. When we have the love of God in us, we have patience and we have kindness because it's, it's what draws us in. Remember, there's nothing in us that's good but God. And everything that comes out of us is God. And God is love. And the love of God comes out of us, flows through other people. And it says love is very patient and kind. Sometimes we're not patient. You know, we're not kind. But because the Holy Spirit is there to help us with these, these character flaws that we have in us. You know, good real love is patient. It's understanding. It, it's, 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 you know, waiting for that person and being kind to that person, even though they're being mean to you, even though they don't care for you. Patience. Waiting for that person to change and letting God change them, not trying to change them yourself. Patience. Understanding. Having empathy. Not knowing what they're going through because you might not have been there and done that, but you understand. You're praying for them. You're you're having compassion. You're empathizing with what they're going through. Em having empathy and and seeing, okay, it's okay. I'm here for you. Being patient with them and giving them time. And so and kind, never jealous or envious. You know, we don't have to be jealous of nobody. You don't have to covet nobody. The Bible says, do not covet nobody. Nobody's nothing. Whatever they got, don't covet that. If they got a new car, you don't need to covet that. If they got a new house, don't covet that. Don't covet. Don't desire. Don't want everything somebody else got. Whatever you need, God got for you. Just ask him. 
and he will give that to you. But the when you see your brother or sister being blessed, be happy for them. Don't covet what they have. And it's never um, jealous or envious. You don't have to be jealous because that sister got better hair or she got a nicer body or she got a husband or she got a car, she got a good job or he got all this money and he got fame and he got people around him. You don't have to be jealous of nobody. God blesses you too. He says he lets the, the rain falls on the good and the bad. And man, he blesses everybody. He blesses all his children. And so whatever you need, ask the Lord for it. Don't be jealous of nobody else. Don't be envious, you know, because they got a promotion and you didn't at that job. Don't be envious because they got a new car and you still driving a, a car from 1999 or 19, uh, in the 1900s. Don't be envious of them because you never know what they, they might have needed that new car. And you need that too? Ask God for it. And then it says, love is not, it's not boastful or proud, you know, or oh, I did this, I did this, I got this, I got this, I got this, I'm better than you and I'm doing this, my children better, my house is better, my car is better, don't be boastful or proud, because the same God that blessed you can always bring that down. You never know what can happen. Don't ever be boastful because God don't want us to boast in our own selves of what we did, but he wants us to boast about him and his goodness. Amen. It's about him and what he did for you. Give him the glory first. And it says, let other men boast in about you. Don't be boasting about yourself, but let other men uplift you and bring you up. Don't boast about yourself and don't be proud. Ain't nothing being happy for what God has blessed you with, but to be boastful and proud about it, like you better than somebody. No, you're not better than nobody. You know, God don't have no respect to persons, and he loves us all the same. And he also wants us to love each other and help each other and uplift each other. And he says, never haughty, selfish, or rude. I'm in verse 5 of 13, chapter 13, verse 5. Never haughty, selfish, or rude. You know, it don't have to be selfish. You know, I give. When God gives to you, he wants you to be a blessing to somebody else. It ain't always about your for no more. I know I say that a lot in some of my videos, but God wants you to be a blessing to somebody else. If you got a hundred pair of shoes and you see your sister and brother might got two, go and they can wear your shoes and they need in your same size and all that. Then go and bless them. Be a blessing to somebody else. If you got extra clothes in your closet, you can't even fit no more in there. Give. It's why it says when you give, it'll come back to you. Press down, shaking together, and running over with men give unto you. And the men that God gives you favor, he puts in your heart and their heart to be a blessing to you. They will bless you. Because why? You didn't gave. It'll come back to you. And it says... I will still be, let me see, love does not demand its own way. Real love, I don't have to demand, I don't have to make you love me. If you love me, it's going to happen. If I love you, it's going to happen. I don't have to demand that you love me. You know, I don't have to demand love. Love will come to you, but first we got to love ourselves. Amen. Once you love yourself, you begin to love others. It's an automatic thing. Even those that, that persecute you, even those that are mean to you, even those that you, you, you begin to love something about that person. And God began to change your heart and deal with the person, in the, the woman or man in the mirror. I'm talking about you. You begin to love yourself. Because you can't love nobody else until you love you. You have to love yourself. Once you love yourself, you begin to love others. And it says, love does not demand its own way. It's not irritable or touchy. Love don't have to be irritable or touchy. Yeah, excuse me, it's like Grand Central Station. You ever notice that when you're in the Lord and you praying or reading your word, it's always some kind of distraction? I don't know, that's how the devil is. He listens to you just giving God glory and you helping somebody else in the Lord. And here come the phone. Here come the children. Here comes somebody at the door. You need to do this. You need to do that. You know, I'm not worried about the distraction, but y'all might hear that when I'm when I'm sitting here blogging, but I'll just push a button or ignore the door or ignore the phone that's ringing 
And y'all bear with me because, you know, the word of the Lord is going to come forward. It's about God right now. And it's about helping each other. And it says, love does not demand its own way. It's not irritable or touchy. When you love somebody, you freely give. You freely want to be around that person. You freely want to be in their presence. When you love somebody, you want to be there for them. You want to help them. And you respect their boundaries. You respect their space, though, too. You know, it's not ir- not touchy, touchy. You don't have to touchy, touchy feel on people. If they don't want that, it's okay. I still love you. It's okay. But I got to know my boundaries. It's not irritable or touchy. You know, I don't have to be irritable all the time. Love don't have to be... <clears throat> no. If I'm going through something... I should be able to talk to you, and you should be able to talk to me and understand what I'm going through, and we can work things out. It says, it does not hold grudge, excuse me, and will hardly even notice when others do it wrong. You know, a lot of us, we do hold grudges. We do, and asking God to help me, because I'm in there sometimes, and we got to let things go, because God says that if we don't forgive others he won't forgive us and i don't want my blessings held up because i'm holding on to stuff that happened to me a long time ago and that's over with and the person said they sorry and moved on and i'm still holding on to all of that you know god don't want us to hold grudges he wants to forgive if i got an oath against my brother and my sister i need to go to them in private and talk to them and get it straightened out and if i can't straighten it out that's between them and the Lord. That's between them and the Lord. And, and I'm just going to pray for them. Just going to pray for them and keep loving them, even if it's from a distance. Amen? That's what some people we have to do. We have to love them from a distance. But I'm going to go on part two of this. On the love chapter on 1 Corinthians 13. And um, I'll come back with the rest of the scripture. Thank y'all for tuning in. And please subscribe, please like, please share, please comment. And remember that I love you guys, but above all, Jesus loves you. And please tune in to the second part of the love chapter, 1 Corinthians 13. God bless you.